Get in here, get in here, get in here because we're gonna talk about how to... What is the video about? Let me see here, I wrote it down. This is my sixth video of the day, y'all. Okay, oh yes, this is a big one. I think my mind went into repressing it because I dealt with this so much. We're gonna talk about how to deal with emotionally unavailable men, all right? I have spent a lot of my adult life in relationships with emotionally unavailable men. Beautiful, wonderful men, and of course not all of them were emotionally unavailable, but enough of them for this to definitely traumatize and trigger me. So I did a whole lot of work on myself and a whole lot of therapy so I can bring you these lessons right now about how to deal with emotionally unavailable men. Let's start out by saying this right now. Just because someone is emotionally unavailable does not mean that they're bad. It does, however, mean that they're not available emotionally to show up for a healthy relationship with you right now. So I'm gonna tell you five different things that you can do to deal with this. For a lot of people, what I know to be true is that your experience dealing with emotionally unavailable people, men, women, it doesn't matter who it is, You've probably been doing this for a while and it probably started out sometime earlier in your own life. Maybe you had an emotionally unavailable parent. Maybe you went through some kind of trauma that taught you that it is okay to be in relationships with people who are emotionally unavailable. So because you experienced a relationship with someone that you love who was emotionally unavailable and you worked hard to have that relationship or worked hard to be in that relationship, it probably built a habit in you of almost being attracted to people who are emotionally unavailable. So much so that you may find yourself struggling to be attracted to people who are emotionally available. I definitely would love to do a video to talk about that at another time, but I do want to acknowledge that dealing with emotionally unavailable people is not always just about them. Often it's about us because we're the ones who's choosing them in the first place in spite of the signs that they show us very early on that they're not emotionally available. So I'm going to get into the tips on how to deal with emotionally unavailable partners, but before I do, of course, let me introduce myself. I am Malcolm MJ Harris and for over 10 years I've been doing videos for people just like you to help you live your best life financially, emotionally, and spiritually. Check out some of my videos. I've got thousands of them. They cover so many different topics, and I believe that these videos can truly help you to change your life in some of the key ways that we really need to make sure that we can have healthy lives emotionally, our relationships, so on, all right? Make sure you click the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the follow button, and comment below on this video. Feel free to converse with one another, share your insight. If you have any additional tips, feel free to share them. We are community. I never have said that I'm an expert on everything. I'm simply someone who uses his platform to be able to share the knowledge that I've learned through my own life with you because I do believe that once I've learned something, it's my responsibility to share it with you because I know that it probably can help many of you as well. So let's go into the first tip on how to deal with emotionally unavailable men. This also applies to women, but I'm going to tell you my particular experience is dealing with emotionally unavailable men. The first thing you have to remember when you are dealing with an emotionally unavailable man is this. Do not take his emotional unavailability personal. It is not personal. He was like this before he met you. And if you were to leave his life tomorrow, he would remain like this, okay? This is who he is. I'm gonna say it again. This is who he is. This is who he is right now. Can he change? Sure. Will he change? Who knows? As long as you are personalizing it, getting mad at him for, why aren't you available to me? Why don't you talk to me? Blah, 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 blah. You're wasting energy. He did not choose to become this way for you. So stop acting like somehow or another it's that you're the only person in his life that he's shutting out emotionally, or you're the only person in his life that he shuts down and doesn't have authentic conversations with. It's not just you. It, it may personally affect you. You may not like it, but he's not doing this for you. He's doing this to everybody. And if you don't know this, then you probably don't know him very well because I'm sure that if you talk to some of the key people in his life, they will tell you, yes, he's been doing this for a while. So when you can learn not to take it personal, it can allow you to have a level of detachment from it so that it doesn't have to hurt you so badly. When you recognize that this person is who they are and then they start doing the stuff that makes them show themselves as emotionally unavailable, like they don't want to talk about serious topics, they shut down when there's a, a topic that they don't want to discuss, whatever it may be that shows that they're emotionally unavailable, you can then observe the issue without having to react to the issue. You can respond to the issue without being so reactive and so abrupt about it. It doesn't have to be something that hurts you. So that's the first thing. Don't take it personal because he was like this before he ever knew you. The next thing, and this is hard, do not try to change him. You hear me? Do not try to change him. 
If he's going to change and become emotionally available, it's going to happen because he wants to change and he chooses to show up for that process. But more important than anything else, it's going to happen when he believes he needs to change. I'm going to tell you this right now. There are people who are extremely emotionally unavailable. They can't have serious conversations. They shut down around anything that makes them uncomfortable. They avoid conversations about the future. They have all the classic signs of emotional unavailability and they think it's okay. They think that it's normal they see no issue with it. Why? Because more than likely they grew up in a household where it wasn't an issue. Someone else that they saw, maybe it was a mother, maybe it was a father, was just like that. This is what makes them feel safe. The idea of vulnerability scares the hell out of them. Whatever it may be, this is something that they feel very comfortable with. You the one who's popping up in their life and you got a problem with it. And you saying, well, you need to change this because you could be a much better person if you did this. And if you change this, these other parts of your life can improve. You'd have a better relationship with your kids. You'd have a better relationship your friend, your mama, your cousin, whoever it may be, you may have all the reasons why they should change. One of them could be that they ha could have a better relationship with you if they change. Guess what? That don't mean that they want to make that change. That doesn't mean that they see that, that a change is needed. So you're trying to change them is a waste of your time and energy. And if nothing else, it's going to harm that relationship even more. Because the fact of the matter is nobody wants to feel like they need to change and no one wants to be in your presence and believe that you see them as something being wrong with them, even if something is wrong with them. I mean, I don't think that you can be a healthy person and be emotionally unavailable. So my thing to you is this. If you can't accept them as they are, meaning that if the person that they are today is the same person that they will be five years from now, right? Picture this, how emotionally unavailable they are. If they are the exact same personality type five years from now, if that thought makes you uncomfortable, then you might want to dip out now because the fact of the matter is that this is who they are. They may not ever change. And you trying to get them to change is just gonna cause you stress. It ain't gonna do nothing to them, but maybe push them away from you, but it's gonna cause you more stress than anything else. So do not try to change them. If anything, focus your energy on you. Now that brings me to my next tip that you need to do, and this focuses on you. What I know to be true about those of us who have a history of being attracted to emotionally unavailable people. A part of that attraction to him is yes, childhood stuff where we may have dealt with a parent or a loved one who was emotionally unavailable. And so we learned to show up in relationships with people who are emotionally unavailable by trying to get them to become available. We get a sense of validation out of, I'm gonna get you to open up and they never do. And so I get that. But the bottom line is this, until we work on ourselves, we're gonna keep on being attracted to the same kind of people, knowingly and unknowingly. One of the best things you can do with your energy, rather than trying to change them, focus on what parts of yourself need some attention and need some change. What parts of yourself need some healing? One of the clearest patterns that I've seen in people who have the broken wing syndrome, meaning you're always chasing after a bird with a broken wing, that emotionally unavailable man, that traumatized person, you're always chasing after them, is that we usually have our own stuff that we're not working on. So it's easier for us to invest energy into them and even for that matter, be attracted to people that we can make into our projects so that we don't have to focus our energy on the parts of us that we need to fix. If you don't take no other lesson from this video, take this and I got more for you. The best thing you can do when you are in a relationship with an emotionally unavailable person is to focus your energy on you. What parts of yourself need fixing? What parts of yourself need healing? What parts of yourself need your attention? Because that same energy you've been putting into them, if you put that into yourself, you will improve so much that it will either inspire that person to step their game up emotionally so they can keep you in their life, or for that matter, it will inspire you to raise your own self-esteem and self-value so you can detach from that emotionally unavailable person and finally make yourself available to be in relationship with someone who is as emotionally available as you are. The next thing you need to keep in mind when dealing with an emotionally unavailable person is this. Whatever reason why they're emotionally unavailable, call it their excuses, call it whatever you want to call it, whatever the reasons are why they are emotionally unavailable. Although those things may be true, that they went through whatever in their childhood, the ex treated them like this and maybe it traumatized them, whatever those stories are, they may be true. But that doesn't mean that you need to stay with them or feel bad for them. You need to be focused on yourself. Listen to me when I tell you this. I don't care what they've been through, and I don't mean to sound like I lack compassion, but whatever they've been through, 
does not mean that they are entitled to treat you any old kind of way. Doesn't mean that you should tolerate being in a relationship with somebody who doesn't open up to you, who doesn't make you feel safe, who makes you feel like your emotions don't matter. Uh-uh, you deserve healthy relationships if you're willing to be healthy in that relationship. And if they are not willing to show up and do the work on themselves to be able to show up as a healthy person and an emotionally unavailable person is not an emotionally healthy person. So if they're not willing to do the work on themselves to show up as a healthy person, then you need to move on and not sit there accepting their excuses as a reason to, uh, to justify why they are the way they are or to justify why you should stay there. You're your life matters and your time is valuable. Do not waste it sitting up here accepting and believing in excuses that frankly are just there to justify why they haven't changed yet. If they wanted to change, they would have changed already. The next thing you need to keep in mind is you need to stop being intimate with this person if they are completely emotionally unavailable to you. Now I know this may sound heavy, okay, but listen when I tell you this, okay? And this is more applicable to people who are not yet married to the person. You're not in a very serious relationship with this person. You're kind of just growing in the relationship with them. I personally love the belief that when you continue to be intimate with somebody who is completely emotionally checked out from you, you are setting the stage to kind of, I don't know, almost delude yourself. Because intimacy can create a false sense of connectedness where you feel like because y'all are connected because of physicality kind of stuff, you get where I'm going with that, that somehow or another, it makes you believe that there is true intimacy, that there's true connectedness, that they are showing up for you. They can look in your eyes, they can whisper sweet nothings in your ear during those moments of passion, but that doesn't mean that they are emotionally available. Emotional availability shows itself through a consistent openness to emotional connection, a consistent willingness to connect during good times and bad times, not just in the bedroom. So my perspective is this, is if this is someone where you know they're not emotionally available to you and you are struggling with how do you detach or how do you create some distance there because you know that this isn't healthy for you, one of the best things you can do is to cut off intimacy because that's gonna allow you to start kind of creating that distance that you're gonna need so you can truly see the situation as it is rather than seeing it through the lens of what you want it to be. Now the final tip I'm gonna give you on how to deal with an emotionally unavailable person and as I mentioned before, feel free to comment below with additional tips that you may have because I'm always open to new ideas and as a community we should always be sharing with one another. But the final tip I'm going to offer to you is this, you need to set clear boundaries. If that person is emotionally unavailable and they are unwilling to have conversations with you and everything like that, do not sit there and wait for them to talk. Well, when are you going to talk to me? When are you going to open up to me? Get up and walk out. If they're not willing to talk, walk out. Do not sit there and tolerate that. If, they, if their emotional unavailability is that they deny your feelings and I don't know why you feel like that, they try to minimize your feelings, disengage from the conversation. You need to have some very clear boundaries around what you're willing to deal with, but more important than that, what you're not willing to deal with. They can be as emotionally unavailable as they want to be. And if you choose to keep being in a relationship with them, God bless you, baby. I, I can't control you. You're an adult, I'm assuming. But at the end of the day, you need to have some boundaries for yourself around what you're not going to tolerate and what you're not going to deal with. And what you may find is that once you set some boundaries, people find a way to rise up in a lot of cases if they truly value having you in their life. They will rise up and they will start to make some adjustments. They may not become completely emotionally available, but they will start to kind to show up in some different ways or once you set boundaries you may even start to see the relationship start to have a rift because sometimes boundaries will show you who they truly are because once you start saying I'm not tolerating that then they say well oh well we just ain't gonna have a connection because they're not gonna do anything to truly get connected with you but either way it goes boundaries are your best friend because they really show you who that person is and they show you what they're willing to do in order to be within your life if this topic helps you make sure you like comment share and subscribe and comment below this video and let me know any other topics you want me to cover. One of the things I always like to share with you all is that the most powerful tool in changing your life are your choices. So make a choice today that can create the kind of tomorrow that you desire and deserve. I love y'all.